calling them a lazy lazy but you ain't been doing your uh your yoga no no well i did it on monday no yoga yesterday though and none today you know why <sighs> no you why? don't do it because i'm working as you know on the best seamless promotion tool fucking ever and i've got a hard deadline i need to get it, it uploaded oh. I need to get it uploaded to Kindle tomorrow, lunchtime ish. You do. Gives it I, 24 hours. So I, I didn't tell yeah, you this. I'll Google it. You what? Google it. Google it. I didn't tell you this before we started, but I've had a few people in my uh, messages, weirdly, in the last week or so, uh, asking about the book. Uh, <laughs> and I offered it to them about a year ago. A year ago yeah, next I... month. <laughs> And they're like, where's See, the book? Like, <laughs> here we go. It says typically reviewed and published within 24 to 72 hours. 72 hours, oh, I love, that would be too long. So I'm going to say 24, 36 at most. So I really <laughs> get it uploaded tomorrow. Well, it won't take 72. It just doesn't. I've never had one waiting that long. And I've had them, and I've had them we we hope. reviewed within you know, the same day. So I need to get it up on the, the platform tomorrow lunchtime. So then it should hit at some point. Uh, and it's gone so anyway. <laughs> yeah, right in so the book. The reason get you haven't been doing your yoga. Hey. There's so a delay what? again, John, and this time it's definitely your side. The reason you haven't been doing your yoga is because you've been working on the best seamless promotion tool ever, as you so eloquently put. Let me just change my connection then. All right, and then we'll say that line again. Right, still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Well, that's not my delay now, that's your delay. Can't be. It can't be. It just can be. I'm on 4G. Yeah, me too. I moved to 4G for this. Well, your 4G is obviously shit. No, you, you've got Irish 4G. That's shit. But the, the common thing here is slow delay in your connection. The, the common thing here is both of us. No, the common thing here is the <laughs> slow connection, and that's one connection from you. I've tried it two different ways. It could be Zoom. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it could be Zoom. Fucking millennials. Anyway, yeah. That's another common the denominator. Best, best seamless promotion tool ever is the book. Now, we've said this before, but books are fucking epic for generating leads and indeed selling your business. I mean, they change the whole dynamic of selling. Because a good example is, you know, we, we get quite a few people say to us, you know, oh, my brother-in-law's a plumber or brother-in-law's a brickie or brother-in-law's a carpenter. Um, I've told him about you guys, but it doesn't seem to sink in. Now, the reason is is yeah you, you know you can you can lead a horse to water and then you can't make it drink and all that but the other thing is when these people with, all, with the best of intentions i'm not being ungrateful these people with the best of intentions um try to sell us they do a very improper job of it very imperfect because they don't know as well as we do they don't understand it like we do we they they will tell these people what we do oh they'll just help fix your business. Well, all these people don't, don't even know their businesses aren't fixed aren't fixed already. They just see their businesses be, as being hard work, and that's just the nature of it. You run a business, it's hard work. They don't realise, well, they don't even know what they don't even know. Whereas if you, if these people don't, if we say to all our clients, we've got a book and say, look, we send, we send you a dozen each. You join foundations, give you a dozen books for you and your friends and your family. And if you, if you meet another person who's not a competitor 
and you give them a copy of our book, if you know, maybe offer, or ask them a couple of quick questions. And if they're, if they're amenable to learning more about how to improve their businesses, get better clients, charge higher fees, and how to build a pipeline of qualified prospects, um, here's a book. Well, then the book tells them everything they need to know. It, 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 in our language, it, it, it's our sales pitch almost. Um, and let's say, it, it, although it is informational and educational, and if they take the action steps I've got at the end, nine of them, they will dramatically improve their businesses just by what's in the book. If they go to the resource section, they'll get even better results. If they come on board with us, they'll get fabulous results. But the fact is, the book will be educational, it'll be useful, but it's also a sales piece. It positions us. And all we have to do then is market the book. The book markets us. Shut up, Haggis. Yeah. Okay. I can't wait for the book. I can't wait for all the marketing we can do around that book. Um, it's the, I've, I've had it kind of in the back of my mind as well. Uh, when working on our ads, feeling like this is almost pointless because very soon everything's just going to be pointing at the book. Even our posts, it's just going to be get the fucking book. And if you got the book, read the fucking thing. And if you've read the thing, read it fucking again and go to the online resources. And if you've done all of that, you're probably a lost cause if your business is still shit. Absolutely. So that's just, it, really. I mean, go on. Just to make it relevant quickly, John, um, we, we speak about this a lot in foundation in our foundations uh, mastermind group, obviously. Uh, but a common thing we get thrown back at us is, well, well, I'm a QS. How the fuck can I write a book? I'm a bathroom fitter. How the fuck can I write a book? You know, we've got a range of fucking expertise in our group and every single one of them, not every single one of them, but most of them at some point have thought to themselves, how the fuck am I going to write a book? To which you always go, don't be so fucking stupid, is what you do. And you reel off some, some headlines for them and whatnot. So tell them, how can a brickie write a book? How can a fucking plumber write a book? Well, the easy way, I mean, there's a minimum way to do it. I mean, and when I, in my old elite group, Everybody had written a book, and it almost got to the point of peer pressure. If you hadn't written, a book, everyone was looking at you a bit strangely, you know, because hey, we have. Why haven't you? And everyone, and that's been in every top, every industry from you know lawyers, healthcare practitioners, hairdressing salon owners, dental lab supplies people. You know, and to answer your specific question, well, just like we did with the guy, he never did it. But the guy we were helping with the kitchens, you know, you, you could talk about how to pick. You could write a book on how to pick your ideal kitchen, and it, it and within it, it would be literally how to choose the, the different kind of styles of stuff you want, and then put information on how to rip it off. I mean, let's face it: every kitchen fitter, bathroom fitter, bricky plumber, electrician, they would all know tricks of the trade that their competitors might use to rip people off. So you could write an entire fucking section on how to avoid being ripped off, you know, the dirty tricks of the trade you want to avoid. But, you know, just do that kind of thing. It doesn't take long. If you write it in an interesting way, and I think for, for tradesmen, one of the best ways to approach this is to illustrate each point with a real story from their past. Because I bet they've all, I mean, I bet for every, I bet for every criterion, say a, a bathroom fitter, can, can say, uh, here's how to choose the perfect bathroom. We've got seven things you need to focus on. I bet for each one of those seven, I bet they can go back over their minds, if they've been in business for like, 10 years or more, I bet they can go back in their minds and think, yeah, and there was this lady down in Pimlico who really fucked this one up. And you tell that as a story. Well, if, you, if you've got a book of seven or eight different stories about how people got ripped off or fucked up, it doesn't take long. And it hasn't to be very long. You know, 1,700 pages is plenty. It's, it's just... When I say just, I don't, you know, don't write a shit book because you want people to read. If they don't read it, you're wasting your time. You know, so it's not just, it's not just fucking a stocking filler. But it doesn't. Have, but you're not trying to sell the book to make money. This is not J.K. Rowling territory. You're not trying to be the next fucking Roald Dahl. You're not going to sell the film rights to Netflix. It's just you may do. Not likely, so forget that, you know, that's to be a nice bonus. The book is there, think of it as being a very sophisticated business card. Salesman in print, maybe. So that's how to write the book. Now, there's, there are specific ways to write the book, as in literally how to structure it, the mechanics, the day-to-day, -day, 
of how to sit down at your desk and get this thing done and, and how, how to structure your time and how to go about bashing these words out. Well, we, we do that as trainings within foundations. And now I'm not giving it away for free. If they want that level of detail, you listening cunts, you can pay for it. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah. But it isn't that difficult. I mean, most people can't do what I do and sit down and just write because that's my job. In the same way as most people couldn't just sit, turn up at a house and rewire it or paint it or fit a bathroom. That's because it's my specialist area of work. But it isn't that difficult. You know, any, anyone with the right structure behind them and the right guiding hand. And if they want, they could say, pay Vicky Fraser or someone to coach them through the process. Oh, it's not what I would do. Um, I wouldn't coach or be coached. I don't need it. I don't want to do it. But Vicky Fraser is a superb book writing coach. She's worked with one of our guys, Nick Smith. So, you know, there are no excuses for not doing it. And, and people say, well, I'm, I'm too busy. Oh, you're too busy, are you? Well, let's, let's fucking unpack that one, shall we? Bearing in mind, this is the most powerful marketing tool you're ever going to have for your business, ever. All right? Let's unpack that one. This book here, which is my first one, Grow your business fast. I've done this because I've obviously got the exact word count because I've got the manuscript. It's it's almost exactly 250 pages, uh, 250 words per page, almost exactly. So if you've got working on the premise, you've got to write 250, page, 250 words to fill the page. Fair enough. Maybe it's a few more, maybe it's a few less, but it's, 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 it, it, we'll say 250. I don't think there's a single human being on this planet who couldn't sit down every day and write 125 words. Nope. Anyone can write 125 words in a day. But let's, let's say you only, want to, you only want to write 25, just to be really fucking lazy. All you've got to do is write 25 words. I bet they send longer text than that every fucking day of their lives. You've got to write 25 words of your book every day. Well, in every 10 days, you've got a page. It'll take you three years, but you'll get it done to get 100 pages. That is a little bit long, I agree. But let's say you do 500 words a day. Two pages a day, 50 days, it's a 100-page book. It's done. In three months at a page a day, you've got 90 pages. That's only 250 words a day. Surely you can sit down and write 25, page, 25 words a day. That's 250 words a day. Yeah. Anyone listening to this is capable of writing that. Take you three months to get a 250 page work page. Take you, sorry, it will take you three months to get a 90 to 100 pages done. Plenty big enough. If you do half that, it'll take you six months. So 125 words within six months, you've got your manuscript done. Don't tell me you haven't got time. You have got time. You could sit on the bog and do it on your phone when you're having this shit. You know? The, the, to say you don't have time is bullshit. I think what it is, people people are seeing that writing a book is sitting down for hour after hour after hour at your keyboard, like I do. But it's not. It doesn't, well, it doesn't have to be. You know, it, it can be an hour here, it can be an hour there. Getting into detail now, but you know, it, it people do suggest, and it probably is best to set aside a time of day to do your writing. Um, same time every day, same place, same equipment. But you don't have to if you don't want to. So it, it's, you know, people who say they can't do it, they haven't got time or anything else, it's, uh, it's just bullshit. It's a non-starter. Not true, as they say. As they say. Spot on, Johnny Boy. And you, you, you've put here, you, you want to talk about how we uh, walk our talk and then you've left it fairly ominous and uh, you could be talking about a number of things well so what in particular no, I mean, do you mean by that well let, let's, what you what i've seen quite a lot and it, it's almost a cliche to be honest is you see people on linkedin and places saying one thing about oh, a good one is because it makes me laugh it's how i don't just work with anyone and i'm really careful with my, my mindset and all that kind of shit and then a couple, of, a couple of days later, you'll see them pissing and moaning about a shitty, a shitty client who's making them feel upset. Well, you know, if you, if you were actually living by the words you tell other people you do, you wouldn't have shitty clients in the first place. 
and they wouldn't be making you upset either because you, you you claim you've got control of your own emotions but clearly you haven't well what i say when i say we walk our talk is we talk incessantly within the group we talk about it a lot about how a book is the best thing you can do and you know i've got my own here had it since 2013 but also we've got another one coming out specific to the work we're doing now so we walk our talk meaning we tell other people to write a book and guess what we're doing we're writing a book you know we're doing we do the same things in our business as we tell other people to do and that's pretty much true for everything we talk about on the podcast and anywhere else and it's not always true because there's something that's just not relevant to us but we don't have to worry about getting paid up front or retentions because we're not in that kind of business yeah so we don't have to worry about escrow payments and late invoices and things but that doesn't mean to say we don't have an opinion on these things and we can't help people with them. But for the most part, probably 95% of the stuff we tell people to do, we do it ourselves. And here's the proof of the pudding. Yeah. We are very much into the strategy side of things for business as a whole, rather than mean your stupid tactics, such as uh, your mission statement being a USP. <laughs> yeah, oh, good God. Uh, I think I had a nightmare about that last night. Can you imagine sitting around a kitchen table coming out with that? Really? I, I, mean, I had a wank over it. Probably the best use for it, to be fair. No, I was just so excited. I was like, wow, the, this game we're in, John, is fucking easy. <laughs> and didn't he really describe that as a game changer? Uh, word for word. Oh, to be fair, he could be right, you know, but maybe he meant it's the game changer because it's so bad it would destroy your sales. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't uh, be a game changer in that case. I, 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 perhaps I'm being a little unfair because I, I've never used it myself, but I, there, there is not a single brain cell I possess that argues yeah. it as... <laughs> for it to make any Just, fundamental but, but, sense. Uh, come on, let's use our common sense. I've never gargled with, with a full of diarrhea either. And I'm not going to, because I don't need to do it to know that it's a really bad idea, you know? You don't need to know that uh, shit tastes horrible. You don't need to test it, you know? You don't need to eat shit to know that shit is not a good thing to eat. Well, there are some things in business you know that you don't need to test because they're not good ideas. Yeah, there's there's no fundamental anything to back. Well, that up, I, I, I want to say I'd like to sit down and talk to him about his his reasoning. I, I, I'm lying. I wouldn't. I don't give a shit. But it would be interesting to see his reasoning on this. Is uh, do you know what I believe it is? He. Apart from crap. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's probably been tried and. Uh, I'd, I'd be shocked to find that this had been tested and measured properly in an uh, appropriate split test where only one medium, well, one thing has been changed and uh, as has to be true in any test. But I believe he's probably comparing, if, that, if that's all true, it has been properly tested and whatnot. I believe the, uh, the control, the thing it's been measured against is likely some scruffy cunt in dirty overalls that has walked out the room after leaving the quote on the back of the fag packet, quite literally. And of course, you're going to get mm. some improvement in results if that's the uh, the control in this experiment. I suppose. Anyway, let's not worry about that. It's just, just thank the powers that be and Lord God Almighty that we're not giving that advice to people or taking it either. Anyway, quick one minute hate. It lasts about a minute. There's some of us have got a book to finish writing. What's it about? Well, interestingly enough, this is the people will be seeing this on Thursday, and it is now Wednesday, but tomorrow, which is today for those people, as in you'll be watching this on the 1st of April, it's uh, the start of Autism Awareness Month which is going to be a big month for me. I'm going to be posting a post a day for 30 days on the unapologetically autistic 
www.ghostbusters.com book, only short ones. But today, my one minute hate is really about the AA month altogether. Not because I hate the month, Interesting. But, I, but I hate some of what people do with it. And it won't be a particularly oh, loud one, right. I'm really tired, but it will just be a, a rant. So more of a more of a woman it dislike oh, than a woman it hate, you know. All right. Well, let's keep it nice and airy and breezy. Uh, stop playing yet, so my headphones don't cut out. Are you ready, Captain? Certainly, am, boss. Three, two, one, boop. Right, Autism Awareness Month. For, uh, as far as I'm concerned, for most people, it seems to be an excuse for neurotypicals to feel good about themselves and then crawl back into their neurotypical fucking holes after the end of April and go back to pretending we don't exist. Hello, we're here. It exists every day. We are autistic from the moment we're born to the moment they fucking put their earth on the top of the grave. Now, here's the problem. Neurotypical people do not understand autism. They don't understand it from a clinical point of view unless they're trying to, and they certainly don't understand it experientially. I know more about autism from an experiential point of view than the most highly qualified doctor out there, unless he or she is autistic, him or herself. But Autism Awareness Month allows neurotypical people to come out of the fucking woodwork with a horrible fucking virtue signaling bullshit and tell us what we should be feeling, thinking, and experiencing. They talk about a fucking person first language, for instance. That's a really big one, which I should go into another day. The point is, please be fucking kind and nice and look after me because I'm a fluffy bunny. Hey, there Don't be mean to me. And it's Autism Acceptance <laughs> Awareness Month. Actually, I, I must admit, and I'll talk about this another day. I, I don't subscribe to the autism acceptance thing. You know why? Seriously. Why? I thought about it this morning, and it's because, well, originally my thinking was, it's not for the people to accept or reject me. I, I don't, you know, it's, it's not something to be accepted or rejected. It's just the way you are. It's like, black person acceptance month if you reject black people there's something fucking wrong with you anyway there's nothing to accept so my son told me he was gay he said thank you for being accepting i said i'm not he said what do you mean i said i just don't give a shit <laughs> you know <laughs> i care about you because you're my son but the fact you're gay is fucking irrelevant you're just my son you know? mm -hmm. there's nothing to accept but it's the same with autism if people if people want to reject me or, or look down on me or or think less of me because i'm autistic i really don't care but that's my original thing. I thought about the morning and it, it occurred to me why this is. And here's the thing. Autism acceptance. If you based your, your experience of life, your happiness, your peace of mind, your serenity, as a lot of autistic people do, on the, the premise of autism being accepted, you're basically putting your happiness in the hands of other people. You're reliant on their acceptance. That's why I don't subscribe to it. Now, awareness is something different. Awareness, I can kind of control the certain influence. I can put information out there and if people want to read it and I can answer questions and I can clarify points. What I cannot do and won't, therefore will not even entertain the idea of wasting my time thinking about is getting people to accept it. That is my thinking. That's a breakthrough in my thinking. That will piss off a lot of fucking autistic people and I'm looking forward to it immensely. But even people now, you know, I said, told you there was discord in the autistic community. Well, it's really hotting up now as Autism Awareness Month approaches, and there are people saying you must not imagine. use the blue jigsaw puzzle because blue is a colour for boys, and it kind of implies that girls aren't as autistic or they're not as many. That's unproven, but it doesn't really matter. I, I never even imagined, I want to, I'm not even aware they use blue, but even if they do, it's blue, you know, it's a fucking colour. I use the multicoloured one. And the jigsaw thing is, some people are offended and triggered by it because of autism speaks. And my, re my reply is, I don't give a fuck what you think I should and shouldn't do, what symbols you shouldn't, I should and shouldn't fucking use. And I call myself an Aspie because that literally makes me a Nazi. I don't give a shit what you think. Will you fuck off back into your autistic hole of self-pity and die, you know? Anyway, I'm ranching now, aren't I? You are a little bit. I'm just looking forward to the uh, the, the okay. Netflix special. You know, we've got murder among the Mormons and anger amongst the autists. I got fucking. I got thirty days of this to get through, mate. <laughs> anyway, I'm off because I got shit to do. Special this month.
If you want to make more money with less work, less tasks with fewer headaches by attracting better clients, selling to them at higher fees, and having these clients delivered to you through a pipeline which itself is kept full and turgid by a hands-off and autopilot system of client acquisition and nurturing, then you know what to do. Go to ottpodcast.co.uk, avail yourself for our free resources, including the free book, which will be up there from Friday, a link to it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Anyway, in the meantime, stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands. Say hello to my little doggy. And please do not shit on your fingers. See you later. It's a, it's a podcast, John. They ain't seeing shit. See you later. <laughs>